Welcome to Chat with Leaders. Our mission is to give resilient servant leaders a platform for sharing the inspiring things they're doing to lead themselves, their teams, and their communities they serve wisely. I'm today's host, Jeff Bond at AppBerry, where we develop custom apps and cloud solutions. Today, I'm very proud to welcome my friend, Sean St. Hill, CEO of Tech and Main, cybersecurity expert and fellow podcaster on his show, Tech and Main Presents. Sean, welcome. Jeff, it's so good to be with you. Thanks for having me on Chat with Leaders. It is so great to be with you today. I've been looking forward to this ever since we talked about the idea of talking about leadership when it comes to race and reconciliation, which is such an important conversation for us to be having right now and uh, obvious, obviously big uh, in our society. It's, it's caused protests and, and a lot of unrest, but I think it's uh, leading to some positive change. And so I can't put myself in the shoes of, of being black, obviously. I'm a white man, uh, but I know that I need to have these conversations and I need to continue to learn. And so I'm so grateful for your openness to, to have these uh, authentic and, and meaningful conversations. Well, Jeff, it's, again, um, a pleasure to be with you on your podcast. I appreciate the opportunity to talk about race and reconciliation. I think when you look at what's going on today in our society, you know, of course, these are these are difficult conversations, but they're conversations that need to be had. Um, you know, in our country, you know, we we deal with racism as we do with a lot of other taboo topics. You know, we um, keep it, you know, within our homes and you know within our small group of influence, but we don't really talk about it, you know, as a as a society at large. And so we need to lean into the uncomfortable feelings that come along with these types of questions. And we need to realize that nothing happens without us being intentional. And so, you know, the issues of racial injustice and the mistreatment of people of color have been around for years. And so the recent murder of George Floyd, you know, has brought them back to the forefront. And so I believe that acknowledging the issue is honestly the first step to healing and reconciliation. Amen. Yeah. And, and it's, it's interesting for me because I've always grown up in, in diverse communities. I've played sports. I've had friends of all different, you know, ethnic backgrounds, and it's never been something that I've considered. I have two nieces who are half black and I, you know, pains me to think that they would ever, you know, be judged in today's world based on the color of their skin. And so I think I've been personally blind to it for a long time and maybe, uh, just thought that it didn't exist, right? Like that we had moved past this, that I lived in this kind of jaded, you know, or this, this world that I painted through rose colored glasses, but I have been so awakened uh, re recently. And, and these conversations mean so much to me because I want to be part of those conversations and be part of that solution. And so again, I'm, I'm grateful. So let me jump right in uh, to kind of my first question that I had for you, Sean. And we kind of touched on this a little bit, but uh, to dive a little bit deeper into its relevancy to leadership, why is it so important that you and I have this conversation today around leadership specifically uh, as it pertains to race and reconciliation? Yeah, I think as leaders, whether we are the leaders of our own companies, we you know, started our own businesses, or whether we are leaders within you know, corporations, small or large, it's incumbent upon the leaders to set the tone for the rest of the organization. And so just like you lay out your um, financial goals, other organizational goals, I think when it comes to the conversation around race and reconciliation, we need to lay out a plan for how we're going to address that as a company. Um, as leaders, you are the first person that's looked to for guidance. And so I, I think it's incumbent upon us as leaders to you know, set the proper tone and help our organizations, our, our families, and our communities realize that, you know, these issues aren't going away. And so the, the sooner we had them, excuse me, the sooner we face them head on, you know, the sooner we can start coming up with concrete solutions to, you know, eradicate racism and, you know, live out the true ideals that, you know, our founding documents say that, you know, are available to, you know, all of us, you know, life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, 
Yeah, the so, America that never was, you know, yes. that, that we have now yes. realized. Uh, yes. Gosh, I'm trying to remember uh, who, whose quote I heard the other day. That, that's that, from Langston Hughes. That's a, Langston a Hughes. from a Langston Hughes poem, yes. Oh, man, that just sent chills down my spine thinking about that and, and also pained me in a lot of ways. And it's been interesting to see all the leaders and companies coming out with their public statements. And, and so while that's great, and I think that's important to acknowledge that we stand, you know, against racism, that we are anti-racism, right? I think it's important that that is then continued. This is not an overnight solution. This is going to be many, many years and in the future of just commitment towards reconciliation and and owning, you know, the, the problem and, and acknowledging it, like you said at the beginning. Um, can you kind of give me a little bit of a frame of reference about your experience growing up uh, as a black man, your professional career as a black man, and how maybe all the injustice and unrest has influenced your mindset lately? Oh, absolutely. So, you know, to jump right in and, you know, talk about growing up black, honestly, it's, it's not easy. Um, you know, I've been threatened with violence over my skin color. I've watched people with less experience and less education be promoted within certain environments. And so, you know, honestly, the events that have been happening recently have me frustrated and upset because it seems like topics of racism, racism and injustice flare up only to be forgotten. But Jeff, I would be remiss if I didn't say that these, risks, that, that these recent events have also made me very determined to engage in conversations that affect positive change in our country. So I am hopeful and optimistic as well. Yeah, I've seen that same spark in so many people. And what gives me a lot of hope is that it's not just black individuals that are owning those conversations. It's so many people out in the protests that are white or of different ethnic backgrounds that are all involved in you know, these conversations and the protests and, and speaking out against injustice and racism. And that's what gives me hope, you know, through adversity comes opportunity and it doesn't take away from the tragedy of recent events and events that have been going on for years, hundreds, decades, right? Hundreds of years. Exactly. Uh, it doesn't take away from any of that, but through those experiences, we are now kind of forced into what's this long overdue need for reconciliation conversations that are way too often avoided and like you said at the beginning which i loved is that you need to lean into it you know and not be afraid don't be combative or argumentative or say yeah but this and then try to justify you know your viewpoint i think you just we have to listen and we have to to engage uh, in the, these realities um, I wanted to ask you a question uh, as it pertains to cybersecurity, since that's your background and Black Lives Matter has been kind of the latest hook because it's, it's so prevalent uh, for evil technology forces uh, to use to persuade people to open email attachments that are containing malware. Uh, so that's uh, something that I'm just learning a little bit more about. Can you break down the root of this evil a little bit and, and how we can be careful of avoiding this in our businesses? Oh, Jeff, this is a, a great question. And so when you look at what's going on now with Black Lives Matter and even, you know, with COVID-19, you have hackers or other bad actors that are actually using this time of upheaval and pandemic to gain access to our personal and business information purely for financial gain. And so when you look at malware or malicious software alone, it costs companies around $1.2 billion a year. And to be honest with you, some people in our industry consider that figure to be too low. And so when you look at what can you do to help deal with um, you know, these hackers and other bad actors trying to get access to your personal and corporate information, first step is having great email security. So companies like Mimecast and Proofpoint are good first steps to make sure that you have that layer of protection as it relates to your email. And then the second step would honestly be having regular security awareness training for your employees. So letting them know that there are things to be aware of if you are not sure who the sender is, you can simply pick up the phone and say, hey, Jeff, did you actually send me this email and verify that you know, the contents of the email are legitimate? And so those are a couple of good steps to helping um, make sure that you protect your business in this environment. 
Yeah. Great advice. And it just n- never ceases to amaze me how nefarious uh, people will kind of capitalize on, on these situations where there's so much good to be had, but it just kind of, you know, continues to drive the stake in some of these issues that are out there. But thankfully there's people like you out there that understand the cybersecurity space that can guide people in the right direction. Uh, the next question I had for you, Sean, and this is kind of a broad one, but I think there's so much to unpack here. Where do we go from here as it relates to leadership and race and reconciliation? Well, here's, here's how I'll answer that, Jeff. So um, one of my favorite preachers, Dr. Tony Evans, has given us some practical advice recently on how to move forward and you know, answer that question of where do we go from here. And so his advice is to find a family that doesn't look like you and get to know them, right? Very practical. And then once both families have gotten to know each other, you go out together and serve someone less fortunate. So I can't think of a more practical and simple way to move forward than getting to know each other and then serving others, doing good in our community. So that would be my advice on what we can do as leaders and as people of goodwill moving forward. Well, I absolutely love Tony Evans uh, recently was given a devotional book by a dear friend uh, and started reading. It was so powerful. And honestly, I did not know who Tony Evans was prior to that. And, okay. and I did not know that he was a black evangelical pastor either, uh, which was, didn't make a difference to me one way or the other. But now that I have known that and I've heard his viewpoints, it has reached so deeply into my soul and and that practical advice. I mean, let's, let's do it. Let's get our families together for dinner and let's go out and, and serve some people in the community. I mean, my platform, my purpose really I've always felt is to serve others in a way that glorifies God and furthers his kingdom. And what great advice that, that certainly reaches to me, Sean. So, so thank you for sharing that. And it's something that everyone can apply to uh, right now. What, call to action outside of that uh, would you have for anyone in leadership right now as it pertains to their organizations? What can they be doing to speak out amongst their team members uh, in their communities and, and ways that maybe they can lead themselves wisely as we continue to forge ahead? Sure. Um, I think the, the call to action I would have for leaders whether that's in the community or in their organizations, is be the change that you want to see in the world. Um, It starts with each of us reaching out locally and then watching as those affect, or excuse me, and then watching as those efforts ripple out into the larger community. Um, When you look at the Bible, uh, the Bible talks about, you know, those of us that are people of faith, um, we are called to be ministers of reconciliation. And so I think leaders, we have the opportunity, we have the resources, um, we have the, the mind share to be able to affect change in the world. And it starts with each of us. Be the change you want to see in the world. We always exactly. do a meaningful quote and post that on our social media handles that will absolutely be yours. Uh, so I appreciate it. Yeah, and you can follow us on social media at Chat with Leaders is our handle on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, uh, and our website's chatwithleaders.com. It has all the links to our podcast channels and social media outlets. I'd love to know, Sean, if people wanted to get to know you and learn more about you and or your business and podcast, uh, where would you direct them? Yeah, thanks, Jeff. And before we give that information out again, I can't thank you enough for this opportunity. And um, I thank God for you. I appreciate your friendship. And I just really want to, you know, make that be known. Um, It's, you know, people like you that, you know, are going to help make the change in the world that, you know, we all need to see and want to see. So um, with that, the easiest way to contact me or to connect with me is via LinkedIn. And I'm sure that information will be in the show notes or via email. And my email address is Sean at techandmain.com. Would love to have a conversation about um, race, reconciliation, business, whatever you would like to reach out to me about. I'm open for that conversation. All right. Well, today is Juneteenth and we are going to be releasing this episode uh, via YouTube first as a video episode to be shared uh, 
as quickly as possible. I'm going to work on it today because I'm so, you know, thrilled to get this word out there and keep these conversations going. Uh, but then we'll be releasing the audio episode shortly thereafter. Sean, thank you so much uh, for your gift of time, your remarkable leadership and your courage to speak out against uh, the things that are going on in this world today, the racial injustice. And, and I look forward to continuing these conversations with you. Same here, Jeff. I appreciate it. Yep. Well, God bless. God bless.